Welcome back. I hope everyone had an excellent lunch. It's my pleasure to introduce the next speaker for today. You are already aware of his work as senior hardware engineer at Particle, building excellent IoT devices, but also from his amazing Twitter photos that you've seen of circuit sculptures based uh, mainly on brass rods being uh, formed together in very interesting 3D patterns. Today he's going to deliver the inside track on how to build your own freeform circuitry. Please welcome to the Hackaday Super Conference stage, Mohit Boite. Hello. Mic check. Everything good? Um, uh, thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Mike. Uh, thank you for taking the time out to come listen to this talk. I know uh, a lot of you might have been hungry, but I hope you are now your tummy box is full of delicious foods. Um, so today I'm going to talk about building um, freeform circuit sculptures primarily out of brass and how you too can make your own circuit sculptures in your free time. Um, as Mike noted, I'm a senior hardware engineer at Particle. Um, how many of you have heard of Particle? Particle IoT, oh wow, nice. So at Particle, uh, those who don't know what Particle is, uh, we build uh, complete end-to-end -end, uh, solutions for building IoT devices, all the way from bits and pieces of hardware, all the way to cloud. Um, you must be familiar with these dev kits that we make uh, for uh, Wi-Fi connected devices, cellular connected devices. More recently, the Gen 3, which is feather, uh, feather uh, form factor compatible. A um, lot of our products go into uh, exotic bathtubs or HVAC systems or even in surf, uh, surf fins uh, to monitor ocean currents and uh, temperatures and all the fancy stuff. But today we are going to talk about building free from circuit sculptures. Traditionally, as most of you know, um, we build circuits with printed circuit boards. You have a, pre a printed circuit board and then you add components to it, you solder it, it goes into an enclosure and never sees the light of the day. That's, that's it. Um, but there are other ways of making circuits. Uh, they call it dead bug, air wire, point to point. Um, and the idea is that you, without a PCB, can interconnect and make these circuits. Um, but this is not a new, new thing. People have been doing this way before even wires existed, uh, let alone circuit boards. But then why are we in 2019 uh, building freeform circuits, uh, when you have access to JLC PCB, PCBWay, Oshpark, all these new uh, fast and around PCB shops. Well, there are numerous reasons. Uh, you need a quick prototype. Uh, you don't have access to a protoboard or a PCB. You're in a pinch. Uh, you want to keep things really, really small. Or you're debugging something. I know Greg here uh, from Australia who builds these amazing circuit boards uses uh, his uh, failures in PCBs and his debugging style almost as a art form. And that's what we are going to do here. Uh, we are going to design circuit sculptures as uh, circuits, freeform circuits as an art form. Um, circuits that look something like this. The idea being you free the components out of their you know, constraints of a circuit board and bring them to life. Some use a PCB, some don't. Some use a passive device, some use active devices, semiconductors. Some are mobile, some are static. So how did I get into uh, freeforming? Uh, as a teenager growing up in Mumbai, India, uh, I came across this philosophy of beam robotics. Uh, I'm sure uh, many of you are aware, biology, electronics, aesthetic mechanics. That's how I got into electronics, is because I wanted to build robots and circuits um, with whatever was available. So I have been building these beam robots uh, as a teenager out of you know, broken Walkman, uh, uh, broken cameras. Uh, so Mark Tilden has been a big influence. Uh, there have been so many beautiful beam creatures built in the 19s and the early 2000s. Uh, a lot of them were powered by solar. Uh, none of them used microcontrollers. This was the, these were the days before Arduino uh, came to life. Um, I also am an active ham radio uh, enthusiast, so building circuits rapidly out of a copper clad, uh, you know, using that as a ground reference plane, and quickly mocking up circuits. One-time circuits uh, is one another way that I was introduced to freeform circuits. Um, another big influence is Peter Vogel. He's a German musician and an artist uh, who was prolific in the 80s and the 90s building uh, interactive sound sculptures. Um, so that was 
uh, that was the foundation for what, what I uh, would describe as my inspiration for getting into free from uh, circuit building. Uh, fast forward to 2015, I was at Ace Hardware, like most of us are on a Sunday afternoon, going through uh, things to, you know, collecting parts to build your next project with. While there, I came across these uh, brass extrusions, uh, these bra tiny, tiny brass rods, um, cubes, tubes, and it struck to me, I had the aha moment, like why not use these brass rods to create these free-from interconnects for circuit sculptures? So I took a, a bunch of uh, brass rods home and I played with creating this very first brass uh, free-form circuit sculpture using a seven-segment display that I had lying around and a particle photon, uh, which is now makes it internet connected. I went through a few revisions trying to iterate and see what could be built uh, with the simple display and a microcontroller board. Um, just like, you know, rearranging things, how they were connected, uh, trying to give them personalities, because the idea is not just to create the circuit, but allowing the circuit to convey or talk to you in you know, uh, various uh, forms. But then why brass? Um, you know, there are other things. There is like tinned copper, copper itself, um, other metals, and why choose brass? Well, brass is, uh, to my surprise, uh, extremely easy to solder. It's stiffer than copper, so it will hold its shape better. It's easy to cut and bend. It's beautiful because it, the warmth allows it to pair well with uh, wood. And a lot of it is recycled, so you don't feel bad about adding to the e-waste, as my day job does, designing PCBs. Um, and brass rods are you know, available in various shapes and forms. You can get them at Ace Hardware, Blick Arts, uh, other hobby stores. These are primarily made by uh, a company called KS, KNS Metals, uh, based out of Chicago. But this is option one. Option two is you buy brass wires in bulk and then straighten it out. There's a technique using a drill press and a plier and twisting the wire and it holds its shape as a straight rod. Um, but all right, enough about brass. How do we actually start uh, building one of these? Um, I don't need to go through the tools and skills because most of you have all of this. Maybe patience is something that we might need to work on. But um, as for a soldering iron, I have a very basic weller. Uh, it's a 50-watt soldering iron that I, I think, won in a competition with Maker Faire, I think, 10 years ago. But I still keep on using it because that's a tool that's available to me. Uh, anything that is temperature controlled has a replaceable tip and brass wool. Brass wool goes a long way. Uh, with every single solder joint, try to clean your tip uh, so that your solder joints are cleaner. Uh, solder, standard soldering. Uh, Solder uh, with no clean or washable uh, flux. Using flux, my favorite tool is the flux pen that uh, dispenses uh, liquid flux uh, over paste because it's just so easy to apply to you know, uh, small locations and you, you can't really overdo it. Uh, if you have a piece of paper underneath your solder joint, it you know, sucks away the extra uh, flux, so that's very helpful. Uh, these are the two tools that I primarily use, uh, flat nose needle pliers and uh, these diagonal cutters. I don't know how many of you are aware, but there are these magical diagonal cutters that have a retainer clip. So when you clip the lead, it doesn't go flying off in, uh, into somebody's eyes, it stays on the, the cutter. So something that I discovered was magical. So how does one work with brass? As I said, brass loves to be soldered, loves to be bent, and it's, it's, it's very therapeutic when you start bending these brass wires. Uh, you should give it a try. Um, I start off with marking things with a graphite pencil, just because graphite can be rubbed off with your fingers. You don't have to use, scratch it or use a uh, Sharpie uh, to make those markings. You cut it, and then this is where the tool really shines. No flying <laughs> projectiles. Um, if you play, uh, pick close attention, uh, the cut is not equal. You know, one side is flush, the other side is wedge or pinched. Depending upon the kind of angle that you're trying to solder it on, it may or may not help you. But again, like when you're working with like such uh, small geometries of 0.8 millimeter uh, brass rod, it really doesn't matter. Uh, you bend it with the nozzle, uh, nose, uh, flat nose pliers. I usually draw uh, the template using Adobe Illustrator and get a printout to scale and then use that as a template as I go bending. Uh, 
And within one or two tries, you can get fairly accurate at uh, bending the brass rods at whatever angle you want. I stick to angles, not curves, just because I haven't figured out how to do curves well. Uh, I think a jewelrist might be able to do something like that. But I stick to angles, straight angles. Soldering, extremely straightforward. You tape it with a, uh, uh, a masking tape or a scotch tape so that it doesn't leave behind any residue. Apply flux, solder. And then when you solder, uh, the brass you know, uh, decolorizes a little bit. You know, there's a tarnish. And, but it's very easy to fix. You use a triple uh, zero uh, number steel wool uh, uh, and file it, or rather brush it, and then you end up with a very clean looking joint. So it's as easy as that. There's like no uh, rocket science to soldering brass. Uh, you don't have to use a heavy watt soldering iron. You don't have to use any special uh, solder. Just solder and flux goes a long way. As far as the process of building the sculptures goes, uh, it's a standard process. You sketch an idea, you do a schematic layout, you breadboard, you make templates and jigs, and you solder. As far as solder, uh, sketching goes, I have just like a whole bunch of binder just full of just random sketches. The idea is to just uh, not let the end uh, functionality come in the way, just, just create mockups. And it also helps to create constraints by saying like, hey, I'm going to make spaceships, draw spaceships today. Or I'm going to make uh, handheld gaming consoles. Or I'm going to make something that displays numbers. Um, and by doing that, you can come up with more ideas in that particular domain. As far as schematic layouts go, I stick to Eagle. But you can use KiCad or any other tools under the sun. Uh, I also like to stick to 0.1 inch pitch. It just makes the interconnects uh, spacing easier to manage. And it just like, looks aesthetically pleasing when everything is uniform. Um, you can use complex uh, dev boards um, like the Photon or the Arduino or any other dev board of your choice. As long as it has those 0.1 inch headers, the interconnects become very, very easy. Um, as I said, Autodesk, Eagle, KiCad, or even Fritzing. Even if you don't have any of these tools installed, you can still use you know, paper and pencil to draw out these schematics. Once you draw the schematic, it's time to breadboard. So every single sculpture that I build starts on a breadboard, just because it's easier to tune values, you know, know if things work, things don't work, um, and then move on. Um, making templates, there's so many different ways of making templates. I uh, prefer just using Eagle's PCB layout, but not necessarily to make PCBs, but to make these templates uh, true to scale where I can use them to solder these, uh, uh, these modular blocks. And once you stack these all together, you end up with something like this. Uh, this is a simple uh, triple five oscillator at the bottom, a BCD counter, and then a uh, BCD to it, a DMUX uh, at the mo top. And it looks something like this. Does it play? Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and so, thank you. The idea is uh, well, the finished product looks uh, something even more complicated than what it starts with. It's just, you know, adding stages or adding layers to, an, you know, as you're building. You don't have to go all three dimensional on something. You can make something that is just a simple uh, LED blinker. So this is a PCB layout that is used as a template to create this uh, freeform sculpture. Sometimes I break the rule of making everything 0.1 inch just because packages aren't available. Uh, this was one project where I cursed and cried as to why am I doing this? Uh, my day job is designing circuit boards and you get things done with a circuit board. Why put yourself to the whole pain of bending brass wires and soldering it and burning your uh, fingertips? Um, but you know, you, if you push through it, you end up with something that you know, like you can be proud of. Uh, so this is a simple uh, handheld uh, gaming console that I call you know the series as handle with care, because I found these handles out of uh, measuring spoons, and the measuring spoons I discarded them and I left with like these half a dozen wooden spoons that I wanted to use somehow. So I made this little uh, console with bicolor LEDs using a tiny Adaf uh, Adafruit trinket at the back, uh, a LiPo battery in the enclosure. And then the idea is, you know, the good old Nokia snake game. You could, you know, 
the green snake is chasing, chasing the red fruit. Um, so something uh, that you could do. It doesn't always have to be functional. You know, this is something that I did for pure vanity. Is drew this pattern uh, on Adobe Illustrator to you know take a printout true to scale and use that as a template to solder things together. Um, the inspiration for this came from you know old Islamic geometric patterns where you use you know reoccurring patterns uh, and geometries um, to create art. Um, so this is a simple bedside alarm clock that was inspired by a a, uh, a spaceship from Star Wars. Uh, one of the recent uh, sculpture uses a different uh, shape and form, but the same end result. is a, It's a bedside clock that uses brass and seven segment displays to show time. So when you're not using uh, PCB as templates, you can make fixtures. Um, and this is where the 0.1 inch is your friend, because you can use protoboards, breadboards, um, PCBs to create these uh, jigs to hold your piece uh, in place. So this is a combination of using a printed template on a piece of paper to bend the wires and then stack these together, space them out with a protoboard, solder these together, and then you end up with something that looks like this, which is, again, a collection of two-dimensional objects uh, assembled together. Another method is that you create these uh, makeshift. For the face, you will see there's a protoboard with female headers. That is just something to hold the, uh, the brass in place as I go on soldering these uh, in place. Um, for boxes or straight angles, I use a machinist square and just line it up, and that's as easy as that. There's no special jig or uh, machined fixture uh, to hold things in place. It's just usually, usually using uh, scotch tape and uh, a square. And I usually stick to, as I said, straight angle, just because I don't have the skills to do curves yet. Um, and then you end up with something like this. Again, boxes uh, stacked together, interconnected. This is a thermometer. Uh, I have that with me, so if you want to come take a closer look, uh, you know, uh, I'll take it out of my backpack. The idea was you can create this on a PCB or on a breadboard, but then how about you, how do you go about making something that uh, as, as if it's like talking to you. The idea that you use uh, anthropomorphic forms in a way where it has eyes and it's an antenna and it has a body and all th these are functional blocks. All the, the entire chassis is ground uh, while the necks carry power and data uh, to the NeoPixel at the bottom. You can use seven segment, dis uh, seven segment displays creatively to create uh, emotions uh, by blinking or you know, using different uh, segments to create uh, emotions or expressions. When you're not using uh, these makeshift fixtures or circuit boards, you can make 3D printed jigs. Uh, this comes in really, really handy when you're creating repetitive patterns of creating you know, matrices. Um, I was able to reuse some of these uh, jigs to create a 8x8 eight eight, uh, uh, matrix, but also a diagonal, uh, sorry, a hexagonal matrix, which I had to create uh, custom fonts for. This was challenging because you don't really come across uh, hexagonal matrices, and you know you can't just like download the font. Uh, so you, I had to hard code the font uh, one LED at a time, and it looks something like this. Again, no real purpose. This is, you know, remember we are having fun with the same things we do uh, every day, which is build hardware. Um, so it just counts down. The four was a little awkward. The eights and nines and zeros uh, are nice. Um, but you don't have to just create matrices for the sake of making matrices. Uh, the one on your left is a uh, sound level meter using the traditional LM3914 chip that I don't think they even make anymore. Um, and it you know, just uh, basically measures your, the decibel and it's like a, what's the word? Uh, graphics equalizer. Uh, the one on the right is another second in the series of Handle with Care, which is literally a torch, uh, but with LEDs in a matrix form. Uh, so this is, see, the idea is instead of feeding the audio, this has a microphone on it, and so it's you know, untethered apart from the USB cable for power. 
you can go beyond circuits. It doesn't have to be always circuits. Uh, model makers have been using brass as a to-go uh, for many, many years to create uh, uh, model uh, trains and you know railroad tracks and other objects. So in this particular project, I was using these uh, tiny brass uh, gearhead uh, motors that also love to be soldered with a standard 50 watt soldering iron and the tubes to hold and make the, uh, the structure and the chassis. You can use the tubes to carry wires through it so the end result looks cleaner. Um, I'm in this case using an Adafruit uh, motor driver along with a particle xenon which is a Bluetooth enabled uh, dev kit along with some vintage uh, resistors that I found at a uh, surplus store. And this was a project I called uh, Zinyan because it was uh, using Xenon to make a Nyan cat. And the idea is the tail will shoot rainbows if you take a long exposure photograph. Um, but instead of just drawing lines, it can also do patterns um, or it can write texts. And the way I was doing this, since it was Bluetooth, I could directly send uh, text messages or graphics as bitmaps and it will drive itself and you take a long exposure photograph. Um, here's it in action. And then that's it. <laughs> uh, you don't even have to stick to brass. You can um, mix brass with other elements like wood or glass. Um, you don't have to be shy with circuit boards. It's, this is not like a purist game where like, oh, I hate circuit boards. I will never use circuit boards. Uh, the idea is to create this uh, in between where you use brass as a simple way to interconnect circuit boards together, or maybe wood to hold it all together, and using something like a Numitron uh, display to display information. Um, some additional thoughts on powering your sculptures. I usually use uh, a USB port instead of using a battery because batteries need to be charged and you know, it, it creates unnecessary waste. I'm not going to you know, have these somewhere powered over a battery and then have to worry about charging or you know, even replacing the coin cells. So USB is a great way. Uh, simple wired um, power also works, you know, something that is breadboardable. So you stick it on a breadboard, use a benchtop power supply and power it. Uh, sometimes I do use batteries, uh, tiny LiPo batteries that you can charge or solar cells. Um, these were, again, an X stock item that I found at a uh, surplus store, like old vintage uh, uh, silicon amorphous, if I'm saying this right. Uh, and these were inspired by beam uh, philosophy, where you're using discrete logic gates to create these solar engines that charge all day and then you know, uh, blink a tiny little light uh, all night long. And they're usually called pummers. I have one of those here as well, if you want to take a closer look. Further resources, Hackaday was kind enough to uh, host a competition almost a year ago um, that, you know, and it, there were so many amazing uh, sculptures. And I think some of you already are here who contributed to this competition. And so this as an art form has really taken off. Um, and I think it's just like any other medium, like paint or clay, um, using circuit sculptures to you know, convey uh, your artistic abilities, or use uh, that as, to, as an expression uh, is a neat way. Um, I want to give out a shout out to Yuri Prowse. I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly, um, but he made this beautiful uh, kinematic sculpture, uh, which is a blooming tulip, uh, which is not just static, but it you know, literally moves and blooms. Uh, if you, he uses the word if you stroke it. Um, he also made uh, a challenge where he was making sculptures every single day. And these, circuit, these sculptures don't even have any uh, complicated circuit. It's just a simple coin cell and LEDs. But the amount or the variety of uh, things you could do with simple coin cell and LEDs is just uh, mind-boggling. And not only that, he's also documenting these processes uh, on YouTube and you know, creating these documentation. So big shout out to him um, to help, you know, uh, promote this art form. And so that's it. Uh, thank you for coming here. Uh, we ha I have uh, some of the sculptures with me, uh, but if you want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, uh, my handle is Mohit Boite, or you can go onto my website uh, to, get take, to get a high resolution images uh, of the sculptures. So that's it. Thank you.